Anne, it's great to be with you. 25 minutes to 10, 25 minutes to 9 in Queensland. Miranda Devine filling in for Steve Price and 131873 is the open line number. Of course, you can email us. Just go to the 2GB, 3AW and 4BC websites and click on the feedback icon. Now, the mystery of the car bombing of the Australian Christian Lobby headquarters in Canberra just before Christmas is not going away. We never have received a satisfactory, a satisfactory explanation from police of what actually happened that night. They downplayed it as a car fire, they cleaned up the arson scene unusually quickly before daybreak, and then they claimed just 15 hours later uh, that it was not politically, religiously or ideologically motivated. Now, uh, we've tried, we've asked questions, but the police have refused to answer. But today, at a Senate estimates hearing this afternoon, Australian Federal Police Commissioner Andrew Colvin was grilled by our next guest, Independent Senator David Lionhelm from the Liberal Democrats Party. Good evening. Miranda. Thanks for joining us. Um, I presume you think this is just as mysterious as I do. Well, uh, in the absence of information that clarifies a situation such as this, you have to assume that there's something there that people don't want to tell. So the fact that it occurred at the office of the Australian Christian Lobby and the police uh, have not been very forthcoming about what's actually going on obviously leads people to assume that there's something uh, they don't want to talk about and with accusations of the police say and particularly in Victoria um, uh, showing signs of being very politically correct these days um, you, you know the, the suspicion is that maybe the AFP is doing the same thing in Canberra and it could be completely innocent, it could be nothing to see here, but as you say, it is the bizarre behaviour of the uh, ACT police um, in refusing to talk about it, treating this a, a very differently to the way police treat other such incidents. Yes, indeed. Yeah, there's really not been very much information. They, they're still not very keen to talk about it. Um, I think uh, Commissioner uh, Andrew Colvin was a little bit more forthcoming, more forthcoming than some of his um, officers might be today, but uh, we still didn't find out uh, a lot. So did tell he... us, what did he say when you asked him about it? Well, um, the driver of the vehicle, the person who set off this... Um, this Allegedly, get, yep. Get off, yeah, is, um, uh, is, is, is a, has been in a critical condition and... Uh, with with severe burns and apparently also mental uh, mental problems and is not he's he's still in a state that he can't be spoken to by the police so so they said I quizzed them and said well how come you managed to talk to him or the ACT police managed to talk to him immediately after it and he said that's not uncommon with burns people can be immediately after burns quite coherent and able to talk okay and then they deteriorate and he was quite severely burned apparently and so um, they're waiting for him to to recover. So how could they then rule out if they have had a very brief conversation with him how can they so categorically confidently rule out that there was no ideological or religious mo or political motivation? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure about that. Um, I gather it was due to the fact that they did speak to him immediately after the incident before he, he started to deteriorate from his burns. Um, uh, uh, they, they even ag agreed that he had walked uh, a long distance immediately after the, after the um, uh, incident, after the explosion, uh, to the hospital. Um, I quizzed them about... Uh, whether they had cleaned up the evidence as quickly as uh, as I had been informed, and they said no. Um, really, no. No, they said that 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 it was 7 a.m. when they packed up, and that 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 was uh, well and truly sun up, and uh, that they had actually had forensics there for nine hours, and that they did in fact gather a great deal of evidence, and they don't they're quite confident they didn't miss anything. All right. Well, that's good. That's, 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 that's good, different yes. to the information that yes. we had earlier. All yes. right. Yeah. So that's a bit more sensible. That's right. So um, uh, they, uh, their motivations uh, were, um, they're, they're, a bit, they're a bit reluctant to go there, and I'm not entirely sure why. It may be that 
perhaps they have a, a, a you know a good genuine reason which is not to prejudice a trial so presumably the individual concerned will be prosecuted in due course but um uh, so perhaps that's, that was what's motivating them, but it would appear that mental illness was a factor. Um, presumably, it's, it's assumed that uh, it was an attempted suicide. Then Senator Hinch raised uh, just at the very end of the uh, session. He said, well, "This is all well known. The individual is Vietnamese. It was an attempt. He's a Buddhist, and this was an attempt at self self immolation. And there was nothing specific about the building." that um, would, uh, that, you know, that, that of any significance that any conclusions can be drawn from it just so happened to be a building in which the ACL's uh, office is located. So, you know, that's and what did, got. And what did Andrew Colvin say to that? Uh, well, he was uh, reluctant to give much details all the whole way through, but he certainly didn't deny any of that. It was sort of like a... Um, well, um, you know, you might be right, but I can't confirm type thing. Uh, yeah, he, he, he's, he said, large aspects of what you just said is well sourced. Got his, so, got his exact words. But yeah, which yeah. parts, you know, was the man Vietnamese? Did he have mental problems? Mm. Did he was it? Did he tell investigators it was oh. self-immolation? Um, blah, blah, blah. But, well, the mental the mental problems issue, he did actually he did confirm, confirm in his own words, yeah. yes. Well, it would make sense. Yes. But, um, but he did say, didn't he, that the the man knew that it was the Christian lo Lobby's building? Yes, although he didn't seem to put much significance on it. But, uh, yes. Um, That's I, the part I find a bit odd. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand it myself. And I, what I don't understand is why the police aren't forthcoming about everything they know. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, it, if, if they're not going to charge the guy because it was an attempted suicide, um, then, you know, what more, what's holding them back? If they are going to attempt, uh, they are going to charge the guy, then there are some elements that they won't want to disclose because it might prejudice it, mm. his trial. But uh, why can't they be upfront about that? And, you know, say, I can't discuss this because we are anticipating charges. That's, that would be the sensible thing to do if, uh, if, if I was in, in their shoes. Well, you'd hope there would be charges. I mean, this is a serious yeah. uh, a attack and vandalism caused significant damage. And also, just a few kilometres away from Parliament House, you've got somebody driving around in a rented van um, full of gas cylinders. Yeah, well, uh, just on the details, there i said isn't it true that he flew in to canberra that morning and the answer was no he didn't think so he's a canberra resident mm -hmm. and i said and i've been told that there were six uh, uh gas cylinders and that he had opened the gas on three of them and was planning to open the other three and he said no i think he's, his information was that it, there are four nine kilogram cylinders and he wasn't sure as to the the um, the status at the time the explosion occurred. Ah, oh, terrific. Well, wonderful, uh, Senator Lionhelm. You've actually filled out some of the gaps oh, and yep. um, it's a pity that we have to go to the extent of, you know, having a senator quiz the commissioner in well, Senate estimates to get some of that basic information. Yes, it is bizarre and it's not just me who is curious. Um, as I said, Senator Hinch was there and uh, asked a few questions. Well, I think I preempted him because I asked them before. But but Senator Barry O'Sullivan from the LNP in Queensland actually tabled a letter um, with, let me see, 13 questions, mm. um, which basically just uh, uh, running through the points that, that you've been aware of, including the observation that there was a lawyer, lawyer working um, not far from the incident who uh, saw some people there. Um, it was, so it was a series of questions about what's known, what are you doing about it, that sort of thing. Um, he is uh, offering to provide private briefings, um, but won't go, won't do it in the public domain. So um, usually, if it's a national security issue, they won't even tell us um, mm. anything about it. You know, um, public servants are far more trustworthy than senators, allegedly, <laughs> and um, which I, I find that a bit rude, really. But yeah. But, um, Very uh, curious. Yeah, but I, it, it makes me think that they may well be contemplating charges and that a private briefing wouldn't prejudice a trial, whereas a, a public mm. disclosure might. So mm. it may be that, um, that he's doing his job, it's just that they're a bit, um, well, plottish about it. 
I, I, I mean, it just seems odd. It wouldn't prejudice a trial to give the just basic facts of the allegations, such as that there were four nine-kilogram cylinders. So, yeah, you I know, agree. It, it stops misinformation also going into the public domain, and it stops people being disturbed by that misinformation. I, I agree, and especially once, as soon as they knew that, you know, various conclusions were being made about uh, the fact that it was the ACLs, um, office that was uh, that was damaged. Mm. Um, you know, I think I think there was a responsibility on their part to go a little bit further than they might normally go, just to stamp on you know uh, conclusions that, that people were drawing on that. I, I you know I think their responsibility was to uh, make sure that this wasn't um, uh, uh, assumed to be a terrorist attack if indeed they had very clear evidence that it wasn't a terrorist attack. Just a, a mere assertion that it's not a terrorist attack is not sufficient, you know? No. no nobody takes a police word for it <laughs> um, if they're sensible, whereas if they said it's not a terrorist attack and, moreover, these are the reasons we don't think it's a terrorist attack, um, right up to the point where they said, OK, we can't go any further than this because it may prejudice further legal action, fine, everyone would have said, OK, nothing to see here, that's fine, good on, let's move on. Well, especially as the Christian lobby has received um, last year a lot of death threats, yeah. threats of violence, mm -hmm. um, you know, protests and so on, yeah. they're, they're already living under, you know, quite strong security and with a certain element of anxiety for the staff there. So yep. I do think that uh, they... And, and we'll be talking to Lyle Shelton after the break, who's the managing director of the Australian Christian Lobby. But um, as far as I know, last time I talked to him, they and that was recently, they had received no reassurance from the ACT police or the Australian Federal Police that they were going to get any sort of extra security. Yes. Yes, I don't know what they've been told. Uh, there was some comment, uh, you may have read it in the transcript, I can't remember the exact words, to the effect that uh, the Australian Christian Lobby know about the motivations of the uh, perpetrator, but beyond that I can't throw any light. Well, on we'll find out in just a minute. Thank you so much, Senator Lionhelm, and I hope to get you back on the show for um, to talk about other things as well later you're, on. You're welcome, no problem.